Hello and thanks for watching this Cloud9 ERP solutions video and subscribing to our YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to talk about how you can manage vendor prices for items that you purchase. So on this screen, I did a search in the help of vendor prices automatic price selection. When you put an inventory item on a purchase order, this is the flow that Acumatica uses to determine the appropriate cost that you're going to be paying the vendor. So the first thing you could see here are their different segments. The first scan that Acumatica will look for, it'll always prioritize promotional pricing over regular pricing. And then lastly, it'll use the last vendor's price. So whatever the last price you paid that vendor for, that's what it'll use. Now, if you never bought from this vendor, it'll use the last cost associated with that warehouse. And then if there's nothing specific to the warehouse, it'll just use the last cost. But if we move back up, you can see from a promotional or regular pricing, when we create the pricing, we're gonna look at it in a second, there's a promotional checkbox. So anything promotional always takes precedence over regular pricing. And then you can see we're checking the documents unit of measure. So the line can have a different unit of measure than the base measure of the item. Additionally, we always prioritize if there's pricing specific to a warehouse versus broad pricing across all your warehouses. And then the same thing holds true for regular pricing. So again, this is a distinction between promotional pricing and regular pricing. So let's take a look at vendor pricing and how we can manage them in Acumatica. Now that we've seen this, this is where you could find it, automatic price selection right here. So if we go into, we're looking at our vendor pricing, we'll look at our purchase order. We'll start to create a purchase order for something. So we'll select a vendor and we'll select an item. We'll pick a hockey table. And you can see here, quantity one, the item's unit cost to this vendor is $90. Now, if I make this 100, it's still the same price. We just have a, an extended cost that's calculated automatically. So where did it get that price from, that $90.65? If we open up the item and we go to our price cost, you can see we pulled in the last cost. Now, if we click on the vendors, you can see there are two vendors here. And Acumatica will maintain the two vendors. There's additional settings here for purchasing. Economic order quantity, default, purchase measure. But you can see the last vendor price is logged here as well. So it's important to note that because when you're bringing items in, you want to put some sort of placeholder, some sort of value there so that you have a starting place. Now, setting that aside, we talked about it in that help document where it's automatic price selection. This price is used assuming there's no promotional or regular pricing. So if we go back to our vendor pricing screen, this is located under payables and you also find it under purchasing. So it's under payables and it's under purchases. So at the top of the screen, you can see there's filters for our vendor, for our item class or category. So you can filter out the items you want to look at here. You can filter one particular item because maybe that item is purchased across multiple vendors, across multiple warehouses in different measures, and maybe you just want to filter down by the inventory ID. If I'm working in a specific warehouse, I can filter by that here, warehouse. And additionally, items can be assigned to product managers or product work groups. So you can filter those so you can work on your set of items. And then lastly, you can look at items that are effective as of, in this case, today. Uh, because when we put our pricing in, we have the ability to impact the date that it's effective. Maybe it's going into effect next month or next year. And we have the early pricing from our vendor and we don't want it to go into effect until that time. Well, Acumatica lets you do that.
Let's see it over here. So let's add a price for an item. So we'll choose this vendor. Go to vendor. And we'll choose our hockey table. Again, notice we only have to type a few letters here. And we'll leave our break quantity alone. And we'll give it a price of maybe $80. And we'll make it effective today. So we save that. Now if we go back to our purchase order, we'll remove this item. And we'll add it again. And you can see our unit cost is $80. So Acumatica looked at the vendor pricing and it saw that it was effective. We'll go back. We'll filter by hockey table. So it looked at this particular vendor. It found a vendor. It found the item. It found a price and it noticed that it was effective. Also notice there's an expiration date. So if your vendor is giving you a month-long price, special price, you can put that in there as well. As soon as the expiration date passes, this particular line will become inactive. So let's do something else. Let's add a same vendor, but in this case, we'll choose a different measure. So a box of 20 of them. And we'll make this 1500, which is slightly under the 1600 it would be. Now if we go back to the purchase order and we'll remove this line. And we'll change our measure. You can see that unit cost comes out. When we change the measures in Acumatica, notice the unit cost, of course, is based on the measure. It's 1500 for 20 of them. So then again, you could say quantity one. So now you have 20 of them that you're buying from the vendor for $1,500. But let's also say, let's go back to our each measure, which is right here in the bottom. And let's say that we have a break quantity. So the vendor is saying, well, we'll give you the $80, but you got to buy five of them at a time and in each measure. So we'll save that. And we'll go back to our purchase order. We'll remove this item. And we'll add it again. And once again, we're back to 90.65. So quantity one, quantity four, quantity five jumps us down to $80. So that's what we're getting there in the vendor pricing. Now, this is great. Again, we could do different dates, expiration. We could check this as a promotion. If we check it as a promotion, then it's a temporary promotion so that we don't have to go through all our items. It'll take precedence over the other ones. You remember from the help diagram, the automatic price selection, promotional items get picked up first. Now, additionally, you see this box up here, create price worksheet. So when we create a price worksheet, it's more of a document. It's a document that has different statuses. Currently, it's on hold. And we have the ability to workshop our pricing here a little bit and actually calculate pending pricing and stuff. So the first thing you'll notice here is we can put a description. So maybe it's go to vendors November pricing and you can import. So we can click on this button here, browse for a file and upload. This is a common dialog box that allows us to select whether or not we want to update existing, assuming there's anything in here, bypass existing or insert all records. Since there's nothing here, we could just leave it alone. The fields will get mapped automatically if they match the captions at the column headings. Otherwise, you can click here and select. So on the left-hand side, what you're seeing is the spreadsheets fields. And on the right-hand side, you can select the fields that are on the screen. Again, they're getting matched here. And if we wanted to import, we could click OK here and all the items would come in from that spreadsheet. Well, let's hit cancel here and look at some of these buttons here. So add item is what it is. It allows you to add items, but instead of adding them in a line by line level, which you would do here with the plus button, you can select off a bunch after filtering what you need. 
So for example, we could filter by a certain inventory item and say, okay, well, we want to add that. But instead we could say computer because Acumatica will search by the description too. So you get all the items with the description computer. You could select them and start to build out your price worksheet. Or you could filter by item class ID, all your different categories. A lot of companies use this as a category. Or price class. So in Acumatica, we have different price classes. So these are different categories. They allow you to categorize your items differently than you would normally do it. There's only a few here. Keep in mind that the price class ID is also used for selling, sales prices. Additionally, when we talked about it before, your product manager and product work group, if these are associated to your items, then you can have specific people work on those items. And then lastly, the price type that we're adding. So when we select all these items, they don't have anything specific to the vendor. So this is a required field. We're going to do this vendor price worksheet for a specific vendor. So let's say it is go to vendor. This is going to be the currency we could default the warehouse that we're going to bring in all these items for if we want to, but that's not required. And we could select a bunch of items here and then add and close. But there's other buttons here too. So this screen also helps. And of course, you could do this all in Excel and import this like we showed at the beginning. But copy allows us to copy pricing from maybe a different vendor. So from a source vendor and warehouse. So we can copy this pricing throughout Acumatica, whatever it is, we can copy it and bring it in to replicate it for a different vendor. So that's an option as well. And then lastly, we can calculate our pending pricing. So percent of original price, we can use a percentage here to alter the existing price in the system. So what price is that? Well, well, you have all these different price bases. So last cost, average standard cost, MSRP, source price, and pending price. So pending price is right here. So whatever the pricing, the existing pricing is that we've already put into the spreadsheet, we can tweak it. Maybe we want to make it 90% or 110% of the current price. We can put that in there. And once we hit update, it'll calculate it and adjust it. So that's easy. The source price is where we copied it from. So originally when we said copy, we want to copy it from a different vendor, for example. That's the source price. And then these right here are part of the item profile. So if we click on the item and we look at price cost, you could see your MSRP, you could see your last cost, you could see your average cost. And if we go back, those are the three types of methods you can use to, again, adjust your pricing. Once we're complete, we can remove the hold and release it, and then it'll be effective for this vendor. Again, assuming the effective date is in place. So that's it. Thanks for watching this video on vendor pricing and subscribing to our YouTube channel. If you have any questions about this or anything else with Acumatica, please feel free to reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks again and have a great day.